So today I'm going to take a little break from gaming laptops and talk about uh, one of the most lightweight and compact laptops on the market, which is the Dell XPS 13. So this is the 2020 version or to be more precise model 9300. Besides the fact it's a very premium Windows machine, it is also a very interesting one. So first, it has a bit of a different design than the previous models. Second, it's one of the rare machines on the market that actually comes with a 10 nanometer Ice Lake CPU, which would be good for the battery life. And Dell also claims you can even do some gaming on this tiny little thing. So that's going to be very interesting to check. Now, exact specs on which you can get will completely depend on where you are, which is very usual for Dell. So for example, the most basic version will cost you $1,200 in the US uh, and it goes up from there while the most basic version in the Netherlands will cost you 1500 euros but that one has a larger SSD than the one in the US you cannot get a smaller SSD than that so it completely depends on where you are however I'm going to be looking at a high-end version here so this one comes with an i7 16 gigs of RAM 1 terabyte SSD and a very high resolution IPS touch panel so the resolution is actually 3840 times 2400 pixels, which is very nice. And this one costs uh, 2000 euros in the Netherlands or $2,000 in the US. Now, that does sound like a lot of money, but keep in mind, similarly specced MacBook Pro 13 will cost you a lot more. So $700 more or 1200 euros more, and that's a big difference. So without further ado, let's begin. This video is brought to you by Cooler Master and their MM711 Ultra Light Gaming Mouse. With a top optical sensor, solid Omron switches, beautiful RGB and a weight of only 60 grams, the MM711 is a great mouse for serious gamers and all-around users alike. Check it out using the links in the description below. You shouldn't expect anything less, considering the price of course, but the build quality of the XPS 13 is fantastic. The metal shell is very solid and the finish is just excellent. I think the XPS 13 design is both elegant and professional, making it both a nice fancy laptop for around the house, as well as something that doesn't look out of place in an office. It is very light at just 1.3 kilos as well, even a bit less if you opt for a non-touch display version, and that makes it extremely portable. The hinge feels very solid, it's very easy to open with one hand, and there is almost no flex in the screen at all. Now, Dell does offer a completely white XPS 13 as well, but I've got the traditional XPS color scheme with the silver on the outside and carbon on the inside. Now, I've had this carbon on my XPS 15 for a couple of years now, and it's actually a very good choice of material. It barely shows any fingerprints at all, and it's also very easy to clean. As it is super thin, uh, standing at just under one and a half centimeters, connectivity is not as great as on larger models. Still, you do get full speed Thunderbolt 3 Type-C connections on each side of the laptop, a mini SD card reader, as well as an audio jack. Now, Dell also includes a Type-C to Type-A adapter, and you can charge the laptop on both sides, using the included compact Type-C charger. That means you can also use this XPS 13 with a Thunderbolt dock that lets you connect all your peripherals and charge the laptop using a single cable. The keyboard on this thing is excellent overall. It has nice large keys with clear backlighting, the actuation feels nice and the travel is good considering how thin the laptop actually is. So this is clearly made with serious typing in mind. The touchpad is excellent too, the surface is very smooth, it is precise and both tapping the touchpad or pressing the corners feels very good and very solid. It is one of the nicest touchpads I actually know. Now one area where the new XPS 13 is different from the old one is the size of the display. Now they really didn't waste any space here as the display takes up almost the entire top part of the laptop which I think looks really nice and really elegant. Now the best part is that it's now a 16 by 10 display instead of 16 by 9 so you actually get more screen to work with over the previous versions. 
So the most basic version will not have a typical 1080p screen, but the resolution would be 1920 uh, by 1200 pixels, while this high-end model has a resolution of 3840 by 2400 pixels. So that's a bit larger than a typical 4K resolution. Now, just to put it in perspective, uh, a 13.4 inch screen with that resolution has a DPI of around 338, which makes it about 50% sharper than uh, Apple's Retina displays and just subject Effectively, it looks amazing. Now, Dell has pretty big claims when it comes to display as well. They claim it has a 500 nits of brightness and about 90% DCI-P3 color gamut, but my measurements did not really back that up. I actually measured the peak brightness to be a bit over 400 nits, which is still bright and it's okay to work outdoors but it's far from their claim. However, this is an HDR capable display. So if you set your PC to HDR mode and play HDR content, it's actually possible to get over 500 nits. So they're technically being right and not lying, but uh, keep in mind in most use applications, you're not gonna get those 500 nits. So I just don't really care for it being marketed in that way. Other display results vary from good to great, but it's not perfect. Now, Dell claims 90% DCI-P3, I measured 81% DCI-P3, but considering there is more than 100% sRGB coverage, I don't think that that will matter too much for most users. Average color deviation is 2.64 with a peak at 551, showing a bit of oversaturation in most colors. Now, grays are darker than they should be too, Contrast is great at 1440 to 1, and so is the spot on white point of 6504 Kelvin. So there's a few things that they should change in their factory calibration because they're not really meeting all their claims, but just to make it clear, it's still a very good and a very nice display to work with, and there are very few out there on the market that can match it. So if you really do some uh, critical color work, you can still calibrate this screen to perfection. So if you do go with a high resolution display, you do pay a serious price. Your battery life will be shorter than with the lower resolution models. Four and a half hours with a reasonably heavy PC Mark 8 benchmark is not really extreme for an ultra portable laptop, and neither is eight and a half hours of watching Netflix at 180 nits. Now Dell claims that you will get 19 hours with the 1200 pixel panel option. So the cheaper panel will make more sense if battery life is extremely important to you. So let's talk pure performance. And while I was really excited to see what the new 10 nanometer Ice Lake CPUs can do, I cannot say that I'm really that impressed. This Ice Lake 7 performance is in line with the eighth generation Whiskey Lake Core i7, like the 8565U. Now, single core performance is actually pretty good, but multi-core performance is simply limited as this is still only a quad core CPU. Now, it's not really fair to compare a CPU in a machine that barely weighs more than a kilo to some bigger laptops, but the 13-inch MacBook Pro is not really going to do better here either. So it is important to know that a machine like this is not really suitable for really heavy CPU tasks like 4K video editing, for example, but an occasional 1080p video editing, most Photoshop and Lightroom work will be just fine. And obviously it has more than enough power to feel really fast in any lighter application like browsing the internet or office. Now, traditionally, XPS 13 was never made with gaming in mind. And if you wanted to do some gaming, it was always better to go for the XPS 15 that has a dedicated GPU. But Intel did regularly focus on the graphics performance of the new Ice Lake CPUs, and Dell does use word gaming in their marketing a lot, which I don't think they should as much. The iGPU performance of this CPU looks to be more in line with the MX150, meaning that most of the games I test gaming laptops with, like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Division, Far Cry, and so on, just didn't run well at all. I did get playable results with very light games like CSGO and Minecraft and so on, but surprisingly enough, League of Legends was really running well. So if you're serious about gaming, looking elsewhere or considering an external Thunderbolt GPU is the way to go. One really positive thing here are the thermals. When uh, stressing the CPU, it averages at a comfortable 77 degrees with a clock speed of 3.2 gigahertz on all cores. 
and it's relatively quiet too at 35 decibels at 50 centimeters distance. It is also possible to put the laptop into a high performance mode and push that CPU a bit harder. Now the clocks will get pushed to 3.5 gigahertz and the CPU temps will go up to 88 Celsius. Now, that will make the fans a bit louder as well, standing at 36.6 decibels. So, I wouldn't really game like this because it will throttle and become unstable, but uh, yeah, there is some flexibility if you want to experiment a bit. One thing that I did notice uh, was that out of the box, the fans were actually spinning up quite often, even during very light use which I did find a tiny bit annoying. Now, thankfully, that's really easy to fix using the silent profile in the Dell power management software. And after that, the laptop will be completely silent in most tasks. I think Dell should tune the default fan curve a bit, but also clean up the software experience because I would rather have one complete application to manage my laptop and not half a dozen separate applications for power management, display, updates, etc. Thankfully, Dell didn't make it hard to open the laptop up. All you need to do is take the eight screws out and the bottom cover comes off. There is no glue or any other nonsense. To make a machine this thin, I understand that Dell had to solder some components, like the memory and the Wi-Fi chip, but I like the fact that they still made it easy to clean the fans or swap out the battery if you have to. And you can actually replace the M.2 and the ME SSD too, just remember to carefully move the antenna cables to the side first and you will need to grab an SSD that has all components on the top side as the space is very limited. Considering how compact and dense the internals are, I'm actually quite surprised how good the speakers still manage to sound. Now Dell somehow managed to make this tiny machine sound better than the majority of large gaming laptops I've seen recently, offering plenty of volume and somehow managing to sound much wider than the size would suggest. Of course, there are limits to it, but it offers pretty good experience if you use them to watch a bit of Netflix or so. And you can say the same for the webcam. It is only a tiny model in the top edge of the display, but it offers a great webcam image quality. All right, so that about covers it for the Dell XPS 13. And I think that this machine is so great in so many ways. I still cannot believe that something so light and so compact can still have such good build quality and be so pleasant to work on. But it is not perfect for everyone. If you wanna do some serious 4K video editing, you're way better off getting a high-end XPS 15, for example. And don't really expect to do any gaming on this one unless you really just play League of Legends. But if you need something that's really portable, that has a great display, keyboard and touchpad that you can work on for hours without being held back by cheap hardware, that's still powerful enough to do some serious photo editing and you don't mind paying a bit of a premium price to get something that's built this well, then this XPS 13 is definitely for you. Keep in mind, MacBook Pro is still more expensive. One last note, uh, if you don't care about the extra pixels, I would go for the lower resolution screen because that battery is gonna last you much longer than on this one. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this review and about this laptop. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one, guys. Bye.